consequences, of course, on the title race. Uh, we'll talk about the title race a little later on with the context of the Arsenal result as well. But focusing on this game, Stevie, why did it happen again? Well, there's not a straightforward answer to that, Dan, because in all the years that, that, that I've played and you have to take cases on, whenever you have a performance midweek, as bad as it was, the only thing that you know is going to happen mm -hmm. is there's going to be a reaction. Mm -hmm. I have never seen a team as good as Liverpool react in the way they did. Because they came out of the blocks, the whistle went, and all of a sudden, they're defending. That's not how you start this game. And to put your finger on that is really difficult because I cannot imagine that Klopp has done anything other than before the game, collectively, individually, gone round them and given them a rocket mm. to make sure that right from the get-go, we, we get after this team. This is a team that's, that's probably safe, on but the beach, actually yeah. is down the yeah. bottom of the, the table. So they shouldn't take an awful lot of persuading to collapse if we get after them. It didn't happen. That is, that's the biggest surprise to me. And then, you, and then when you start like that, I said it the other day, when you start slowly, it's very difficult to get going. And as much as we've shown all the chances, they weren't through great football. Liverpool didn't play any football today. Why not? Bad decisions. Bad choice of pass. Putting the ball in the wrong place. Passes going astray. I mean, we, 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 on two occasions today, a pass was put out of the field behind yeah. the player going. Liverpool, under Klopp, are a team that got everything spot on. Mm. So are they tired? Do they lack confidence? What's going on? You know, I spoke about it last week, about form, as far as the front, front players are concerned. Mm -hmm. And again today, the ball fell to the front players yeah. and they couldn't put it in the back of the net. Lack of form. And when, you, when you've gone through the types of performances and results that Liverpool have, it does start filtering through the whole side. And you have to think that there's a bit of second guessing going on. And when the second guessing going on, again, there's a domino effect. Everything becomes harder. And then it just siphons through the whole side. And that's what we saw today. From the first minute to the last minute, chances, yes, opportunities, yes. But football, no. Well, but then what's supposed to be the difference maker? The difference maker is supposed to be you paid a big transfer, you're paying a large salary for this core of players that player for player are better mm -hmm. than Crystal Palace's player for player. And at some stage, one of those guys is going to do something that is the real, and then we all say, oh, that's why. That's why. That's why they're paying this guy. Okay, collectively, they're off a little bit, but somebody yeah. was going yeah. to rise to the occasion. And to what? Stevie's point, they just, when you but start, you just don't have it. What, what really surprises me, though, is we can talk about Arsenal having never been there. Large majority of this Liverpool yeah. side have been there and done it and won it. And, and that, I guess, would be maybe where the problem is. That... Players who have been there and done it have lost that edge of confidence. You say that, Stevie. That there has been quite a bit of rotation since you won the title. You think Salah, Van Dijk, still the spine there, along with Alisson. There are a lot of new Robertson, faces. Goalkeeper, centre back. I mean, come on. And again, that's what we. When we talk about putting a, a, a great team together, you need a mix of everything. Right. And everything they've got is, is that. It's a mix of new with Nunez yeah. and yeah. the old with, with, with Van Dijk at the back. So. It's, it is absolutely has to be down to second guessing, which makes everything you do harder, which makes an easy pass just a little bit harder. And then by the time it gets to a difficult pass, you can't do it. You've taken too long, you've second guessed yourself, and then you decide to do it, it's too late, you don't get that amount of time. Go on, Jan. Now, what, what we've learned this weekend is the following, uh, that uh, there could be twists and turns, and we're going to talk more about the championship, or which, what consequences this, this, this weekend could have. But what we've seen this season is if you, you can't have a top team without having a top goal scorer. And I'm not saying that we've talked about all, all year long about Arsenal. Arsenal is scoring enough goals. Liverpool scoring enough goals. But the main thing is, when you see the great European clubs, is that you have a number nine who scores you to 1-0. You score when, when the goals get tough. If you take Liverpool weeks, there's Manchester United, 
that they had 10 chances. Today against Crystal Palace, yes, I'm, I'm with the boys. Maybe not the best play, but they still created 10 chances. And let's be honest, Nunez is not a top, top class striker. Diaz is not a top class striker. They are great players. They are fun to watch. They got energy when they're on the top of the game. But they're not the goal scorer that you will say, yeah, they will get me 20, 30 goals. No chance. And when Salah now is not putting the chances away, Liverpool go down there. And then there is a lot of reasons why they didn't play well today. I saw the game. You could say that the Spritzigkeit, there were no energy in, in their, their play and everything. And maybe, like, like Steve is saying, Atalanta game could, could play into this. But I just think that this weekend you saw how both Arsenal and Liverpool are lacking that 1-0 striker. That striker who knows you give you that goal. And that, that happened against, against Manchester United. It happened against Crystal Palace for Liverpool. 